film geeks my name is trevor welcome back to my channel today i'm sharing with you guys my top 10 favorite movie franchises of all time join me down below in the comment section which of these franchises are your favorite and what are your top 10 favorite movie franchises ever and what would you deem the number one favorite movie franchise of yours let me know that all down below in the comment section and also this is a companion video there's going to be another video over on my friend max's youtube channel max talks movies where he gives you his top 10 favorite movie franchises of all time go over there subscribe to him comment that film geek sent you and go check out his list because max has a lot of awesome content over there with that said let's get started not with my top 10 but a couple honorable mentions and starting off with my honorable mentions these might get me a little bit of trouble we have indiana jones james bond and the Bourne franchise. I really do enjoy all those franchises. They just didn't make my top 10 but they were oh so close with that said let's get started <laughs> So at number 10 is going to be The Hunger Games. I actually rewatched these movies recently and I absolutely fell in love with them all over again. As they go on, it seems like when you get to Mockingjay, Mockingjay Part 2, those seem to be the weaker links of the film. But Catching Fire easily makes this franchise one of my favorites. Fr Catching Fire is one of my favorite sequels of all time. And the original Hunger Games movie is so convincing and so compelling. And I remember watching the first Hunger Games movie all the time in theaters. And I remember rewatching Catching Fire all throughout high school. The Mockingjay movies aren't as strong, but those two movies really make this one of my favorite franchises of all time. These characters, this world, everything they did with it is something so unique and we've never seen before that I absolutely fell in love with it. And I'm Team Finnick O'Dare, okay? Everyone's like, Team Peter, Team Gale, Team Finnick O'Dare for the win, baby. Number nine. Fast and Furious. I like to go fast. I like it to be furious. And as the dumber that these movies get, the more and more I love them. I call them popcorn movies where you're just shoving popcorn in your mouth, watching a good time. These movies are not going to win Academy Awards. They're not even going to really make much sense. But damn, are they going to be fun. And that's exactly what Fast and Furious is. It should be called Fast and Furious Fun Time at the Movies. Because that's exactly what you have. I don't go there to see Oscar-nominated performances. I go to see Dominic Toretto and all these awesome characters and their family go out there there basically the same premise every time they get hit really hard they come together as a team they get some cool cars on the way of an epic out of proportion action scene at the end that makes no sense that no one could survive it but they still make a lot of money and i still freaking love them number eight the Harry Potter franchise, I didn't really grow up watching these movies. I actually started watching them later in my life. Really about three years ago, I started re-watching them. And I want to read the books just to compare them. But these movies are absolutely fantastic. From The Sorcerer's or The Philosopher's Stone all the way to Deathly Hallows Part 2. Which I think is a fantastic beginning but an even better ending. I absolutely love these movies. I want to go dive into these movies again and re-watch them all. And even talk about them on the channel. Because this is a franchise that we're really not going to see again. Nine movies that are just so epic in this world that is meant for kids but it's also so meant for adults because these movies get so dark and these movies have lots of mature content in them and they did such a good job of capturing you in and getting you to care about these characters and for you to be terrified of he who shall not be named. Voldemort's always this specimen that we never really got to meet the first several films. When he finally comes on screen you feel his presence and even though when he's off screen you just know he's there and that's what Harry Potter really captured their villain didn't have to be on screen for you to be scared when i watched these as a kid every time i mentioned voldemort or voldemort came on screen i remember being terrified and that big ass snake no thank you man Number seven is going to be the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I absolutely love these movies. And the first three make it one of my favorite trilogies of all time. The later movies, not so much. We're not even going to talk about them. But The Curse of the Black Pearl, Dead Man's Chest, and At World's End are three of probably my top 50 favorite movies of all time. I love these adventures with all these pirates. And Jack Sparrow is one of my favorite protagonists of all time. We also have great villains in there like Davy Jones and Barbosa, who ends up being a good guy throughout the movies. It's all such a creative and amazing world but such likable characters and it's a really fun movie you can just watch with your family i watch the first three of these movies at least one time a year as i said the other movies we don't really talk about so much but these first three movies are easily one of my favorite trilogies of all time and it easily makes it one of my favorite franchises of all time number six the one franchise that seemingly gets better as it goes on Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible Fallout is my favorite action movie of all time. And I think it's the best Mission Impossible movie to date. 
And these movies get better and better and epicer and epicer, which isn't even a real word, but my goodness. And they age like fine wine. And that's what's so great about this franchise, because a lot of times you see them go on a little bit too long. Kind of like Fast and Furious is doing, but Mission Impossible just gets better. And like, especially with Mission Impossible Fallout, their last installment, set up all the other more movies we're going to get. And it made sense to continue the franchise for how successful Fallout was. But it also made you love the entire franchise as a whole. And Ethan Hunt is a fantastic hero you can get behind. And the score in these movies is great. The characters are even better. And overall, the epic scope of these films is what makes it what it is today. And I absolutely love it. Breaking us into the top five is going to be the DCEU. I've been a defender of the DCEU for quite some time, but with movies like Zack Snyder's Justice League finally coming out and Birds of Prey and Shazam, the DCEU has truly found its footing. And before, it kind of seemed like a mess with Suicide Squad and Justice League, Joss Whedon's Justice League, and all these different movies that are like, where is this really going? Didn't seem like it have a real direction, but it feels like the DCEU finally has its head on straight and it's going forward smoothly. I am so excited for all the new DCEU project, but these are some of the most classic characters of all time from Superman to Wonder Woman to Batman. Batman's one of my favorite superheroes of all time, and I absolutely love the Batfleck, but to see all these characters brought together, and especially in Zack Snyder's Justice League, brought together in a right way, that just makes a DCEU that much better, and I cannot wait for all the future DCEU content. This is the one franchise that started off really rocky that I think is going to skyrocket to be almost as popular as the MCU, if not more popular, because it has these iconic characters that everyone knows and everyone loves. The DCEU is finding its footing, and it's really starting to make its way to be one of those top-tier franchises. At number four, you guys can hate me for it. The X-Men movies, man, I love them unashamedly, and X-Men Origins is a huge guilty pleasure of mine. I absolutely love that movie, but Days of Future Past is one of my favorite superhero movies of all time, and the X-Men movies are honestly kind of criminally underrated, especially because they had some movies that are a little bit lackluster. Everyone kind of deemed the whole franchise as bad. If you go to the prequel trilogy, one of my favorite trilogies of all time, you have First Class, Days of Future Past, and Apocalypse, which I'm not even the biggest fan of Apocalypse, but First Class and Days of Future Past, but then you go ahead and throw Logan and Deadpool and Deadpool 2 in the mix. It's so diverse, and these are some of my favorite superheroes of of all times and even like the new mutants which isn't great but still has some enjoyment level in there i cannot wait to see the x-men characters get brought into the mcu kind of give them a new revival and a fresh start i absolutely love this franchise i will defend it till the day i die and x-men origins don't care what you say it's a good movie at number three star wars how do you not love these amazing characters and these amazing movies that have had a kind of a rough patch lately, especially with audiences. I enjoyed The Rise of Skywalker, but wasn't my favorite Star Wars movie, and it definitely was not a lot of people's favorite Star Wars movie. But when you go to these characters of Luke Skywalker, to Han Solo, to Princess Leia, to Chewbacca, then to the newer characters of Obi-Wan Kenobi, Anakin Skywalker, who's my favorite Jedi until he turns to Darth Vader, this movie has something for everyone. As a kid, I loved watching these movies, and now that I'm an adult, I still love going back and watching these movies. From The Empire Strikes Back to The Phantom Menace, all the way to The Rise of Skywalker, there's something in here for everyone. And not everyone's going to love all the movies. But then you go to the Star Wars TV shows, which isn't part of the movie franchise, but just how the franchise branched out to be able to do these type of TV shows. They kept the popularity alive, and then eventually they'll bring the movies back around. What Star Wars has done is something that very few of the other franchises will ever be able to accomplish. Star Wars is absolutely fantastic. It was something I hold near and dear to my heart. There's just two franchises I like a little bit more. Number two, my runner-up. If you know anything about me, you know I love the Lord of the Rings movies. And I absolutely love the Hobbit movies. The Middle Earth franchise is one of my favorites in the world. And I hold it so near and dear to my heart that I cannot believe... It's not number one, but these movies mean so much to me because I've watched them for as long as I can remember. I owned them on VHS back in the early 2000s, and I wanted to see them in the theaters, and they still haven't. I'm still kicking myself. But these characters are some of my favorite characters of all times, and it's probably my favorite ensemble ever, the true fellowship that starts in the Fellowship of the Ring. What Peter Jackson was able to do with these practical effects back then is second to none. They still hold up to this day 20 plus years later. It is absolutely insane what Peter Jackson was able to do. 
And then 10, 15 years later down the road, he got to make the Hobbit movies, which were nowhere near as popular as Lord of the Rings movies, but still amazing prequels that set up a lot of things we were kind of wondering in the Lord of the Rings movies. I absolutely love Lord of the Rings, and the Lord of the Rings is doing kind of what Star Wars is doing. They're going to be able to branch out to a TV show, which is going to be epic, by the way. I will never not love Lord of the Rings. If you have not watched Lord of the Rings, my God, go watch him. Number one is going to be the Dora the Explorer franchise. I absolutely fell in love with these movies since I was a kid. Totally kidding. I don't even think Dora the Explorer has a movie franchise. The real number one is going to be the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It goes without saying that I love the MCU and everything I have behind me, but the MCU is something that I don't think any franchise will ever be able to do again. 20 plus movies that all are fresh on Rotten Tomatoes and all, honestly, are good movies. And they've done something so well that the audiences and fans, they get excited when just someone gets announced in the cast. That's what Marvel and this franchise has done. Oh, this person's going to be in the movie. We, us nerds, we get excited about that. And these are definitely the best in theater experiences I've I've ever had when I got to see the likes of Infinity War and Avengers Endgame in theaters I never had more fun in my life when watching a movie the epic proportions of these movies the iconic characters everything about this franchise works so well and it just makes me love movies that much more but it really makes me love being a fan of this franchise and that's what Kevin Feige and Marvel do so well they get you to care and they get you to love it and they get you to talk about it and they are going also and producing TV shows which are blowing out of proportion how successful these are. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is something that will never be paralleled again. And it comes in at my number one. Make sure to head over to Max Talks Movies and go and subscribe to him and check out his top 10 video. See how our list compare it. Thank you so much, Max. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Join me down below in the comment section. What are your top 10 favorite movie franchises? Let's talk about it. Hit that thumbs up button for me. I'll see you guys next time.